Hey everybody! I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, we're doing pretty well over here. Nobody's sick and we're all just trying to finish up the year, right? Finish strong. I hope your Latin has gone well. Um, I just want to start, first of all, by saying that I think I've got most of the Eight-Eyed Monster artwork in, but I think I must have been a little bit unclear on that. So, um, in the instructions, the purpose of that artwork was to remember those two very strange words that, well, they're not really strange words. They just have very strange endings, Mara and Animal. Okay. And we remember that they're eight eyed monsters. So remember we had in the Mare, we had an animal, a very scared animal in the ocean, right? In the sea, I should say, in the sea. And then there was an eight eyed monster coming up, right? Trying to come after him. So many of you guys have had awesome ideas for this and I'm so excited to get to show everybody, everybody else's ideas. But I just want you to know that on that picture, so on your printout that you have, your handout um, that goes into your grammar folder, you need to make sure you have a small picture in there or you've attached your picture that you've done so that you can always refer to that and remember that on that picture was a Mara and an Animal. So you can remember that those are your third declension neuters that are an exception to the main way of declining that, right? They like to keep all of their eyes. Okay, anyways, moving on. But if I don't have a picture that has a Mara and an Animal, or let me rephrase that. If I get a picture from you that has an, a Mara and an Animal and all the endings with your eight-eyed monster and everything else, and it can be as creative as you want, if I get that, you earn an automatic 100% on your quiz from last week, which we didn't have a quiz. So I'm using that as your quiz to kind of boost those boost uh, quiz grades if you need that. Okay, so let's start off today by reviewing our next picture. Okay, so we remember that our third declension nouns can either come in masculine, feminine, in neuter, or in that strange eight-eyed monster neuter ending, right? So this chapter, the thing you're focusing on is learning that vocabulary that are in that third declension neuter ending category, okay? So let's just review those endings for a minute, okay? So we had our masculine feminine, which was our any, ace, M, ace, is, and make sure you're saying them with me, em, or, um, e, ibis, e, ibis, okay? Then we had our regular neuter, not our eight-eyed, that were a little different, right? They would come to us as any form, and then, ah, neuter law, these two are all, the, or these four are all the same, any, a, is, um, e, ibis, e, ibis, okay? And then of course our eight-eyed monsters had the ia here, right? Ia, is, iam, and then this was an e, okay, if they were eight-eyed monsters. Now, What I want everybody to do right now is I want you to get out a whiteboard or a piece of paper or something, okay? And I want you, you're gonna pause the video in a minute because what I want you to do is I want you to draw your picture of the dude that's right in the flumen and I want you to label it, okay? And then you can come back and we'll draw it together. Okay, we'll make sure we're good. Okay, so go ahead and hit pause. All right, so hopefully you've drawn that out and you've remembered to label it with your singular and plural. Let's go on ahead and do it now. So the first thing was this flumen, and then it's plural, flumina, right? We had the guy standing in there. These were his 
legs, his cruz, crura. Okay, I'm gonna draw this river behind him. Now he's a funny looking guy, right? Because he doesn't have a center. He has a chest, which was a pectus, pectora. So again, you see how the ah, 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 here they are. They come to us in any form and then ah, ah, ah. Remember they keep that stem, so this would go pectus, pectora, pectus, pectora, pectoris, pectorum, pectori, pectoribus, pectore, pectoribus. Okay, now of course he needs a head, which we know is caput and capita. He needs a mouth. Os and ora, so again we're seeing it's all fitting, right? He needs a core and a corda. And then we circled the whole thing and we said the whole thing was his corpus, his body, his corpora. Okay. So those are the ones that you've learned, right? I think we'll only be adding one more to this picture, um, but that won't be for a little while still. So now, if you didn't know that, or you got some wrong, you need to stop the whole shebang, and you need to do this several times, because if you don't know this, you're not gonna pass your quiz. Okay, so one of the questions that I got this week was, let me grab my eraser. This one doesn't work very well. Um, one of the questions that I got this week was regarding um, line number 38. So flip to line number 38. Okay. Do you see how it says mater apud et um sedet? So the mother sits with him. And then it says manum que et ius tenet. So all this is saying, and holds his hand. So the mother holds his, whose quintus's, or the boy's, his hand, okay? So this word manum is that word that we learned in section one that was for hand, which was a little bit weird because we haven't learned all the endings for that one yet. Now you have it actually in your, um, in your memory period. Okay, so if you don't know these endings because of memory period, then you, you should probably start listening to those. But your fourth declension, this is your first one you've gotten, is manus, and then it's this is our nominative, singular and plural, manus, manus, okay, with a required maker on here. And then the accusative is manum. Okay, so this looks a lot like the uh, masculine second declension noun, right? So as you learn more, you're gonna see that the rest of the endings are very different. But I just wanted to point that out. I think it might be a little too far. I'm looking at the camera. There we go. Okay, but I just wanted to point that out, that this is actually a fourth declension, okay? So it's singular is manus, it's plural is manus, but it's accusative singular is manum. All right, so we'll get into that um, in chapter 12. But I want you to know that that word there is hand. I don't think you're going to see it a whole lot except for these two forms, okay? All right, so I'm going to actually erase this board just in case you're looking at the screen while you take your quiz. Um, and I'd like you to go on ahead and... Um, pause and take your quiz. Okay, hopefully that quiz went well. And um, don't forget to send that in to me by the end of the day on Friday. And, and your quiz from last week, which was that artwork. Okay, great. Let's move on to the next thing. Okay, we are supposed to read today section two, and then we're also supposed to do the first four um,
problems in exercise four and five. So we're gonna read first, and then we're gonna do the first four problems in each of exercise four and five. Now, um, when I was looking through section two, let's see, where am I? Here we are. Um, you've already started it. This is a very long section, okay? I want to point out something that is um, new, actually. It's new. Okay, in, on the um, email, I sent everybody a worksheet that looks like this. It's called, it's not really a worksheet, it's just an insert to add to your grammar. So it says special case rules, okay? And page two, it says ablative, right? It gives you your ablative rules. So I want you to get that out and put it in front of you. And all this is, if this confuses you, I just want you to hole punch it and put it into your folder and don't worry about it, okay? If it confuses you, then don't worry about it right now. However, if you, this is just a reference and you'll begin throughout the years, you'll begin to, there'll be more added to these things and you'll begin to see different examples of this, right? Like we've seen the ablative of means in multiple examples. So I want you to look at the ablative side, okay? I want you to go down to number eight, where it says an ablative of respect. Now, sometimes we teach you the fancy, like the official um, label or name for a, um, for a, a special use of the ablative or the nominative or whatever. Um, and sometimes we don't because it hasn't been important. So actually, I'm sorry. So if you if you go back up, you know, a place where Roma in Italia est. I didn't tell you then that when you see in Italia that it's called a, a special ablative place where, right? But that's just the official name for it. That's all these are. All this stuff every single one of these things you've already learned sometimes you've learned the special name for it like ablative of means number six or number seven ablative of definite price you have learned that language already i just want to have let you have this in front of you so that you can see the different ways that these cases are used so far this is chapters one through twelve so there might be a few things in there that you haven't had yet but they're all labeled for where you'd find it okay Let's take a look at number eight because you learn about number eight in section two. Okay, so number eight is an ablative of respect. Now all this is, is just, it's really, it answers the question, how? Okay, so, or you could say, in what respect? And in, in how we're learning this is in what respect Quintus is sick. So if you look at line number 62, I'm gonna just put Q for Quintus, okay? It says, pede I grow tat, okay? Now this is weird, because that is our ablative singular, right? Pes pedes, pedem pedes, pedes, pede, right? Keep going, pede, holding on that ablative singular. But we're thinking this isn't a by means of, although we might think it could be, but this is actually in what respect, how is Quintus sick? Quintus is sick in respect to his foot, okay? Which we will see is not quite what the medicus understands. All right, let's also look down at line 66. It says, nequer solum, so not only pede, said etiam capete, remember that's head with its stem change, caput, capita, caput, capita, you go all the way down to that ablative singular, you get capete, okay? I grow, let's see, I don't want to, there we go, tat, um, filius meus. Okay, filius meus. So not only, remember these two phrases work together. Okay, they work together. Not only 
Now what we could go to is we could say not only is my son, so there's our subject, there's our verb, not only is my son sick in respect to his foot, so just like we saw up there, but also in respect to his head, okay? So when you translate this, you can use the words in respect to if you want, okay? You can also just say not only is my son sick in the foot or it's kind of weird. It's, it, remember, when you're going from one language to the next, it's not meant to be perfect in English, right? They spoke their language the way they spoke their language, and we have to just kind of, the, the, the important part is to understand what they're trying to communicate. Okay, so what they're trying to communicate is he's sick in respect to the foot. So in his foot or with his foot and also in the head which is kind of weird to say, because when we say somebody's sick in the head, it, we're kind of thinking they're like crazy. But anyways, I'm, I'm kind of rabbit trailing there. I hope that that makes sense. So it's not a hard one. And remember, you're just trying to recognize it when you see it and be able to translate it correctly. Um, you may have to use it in some of the exercises. So just look out for that. I think you're only gonna use it right now when you see this verb, aigrotat. And it's kind of answering the question, how is the person sick? Okay, they're sick in respect to their foot. They're, he's sick in respect to his head. Okay, all right, if you have any more questions about that, please feel free to shoot me an email, okay? All right, so let's jump into our reading and then, um, and then we will do our exercises okay the first four in our exercises so you need your vocabulary list out and you need your book of course and we're gonna start on line um, 68 okay so all right, here we go. So as you're reading, I want you to pay attention to, um, you're gonna be looking for changing a direct, uh, direct quotation into an indirect, okay? So we're gonna be looking for that as we're reading, okay? All right, Julius in cubiculum quinti, quinti intrat, cum medico qui ad lectum adit, Atque puerum aspicit. Okay, so we have several prepositional phrases here. I want you to mark in your book and see if you can find them all. Okay, so I see three. So, Julius in trot. That's our first verb. Okay, so we're going to translate that first. Julius enters in cubiculum. In to the bedroom quintii of Quintus. So I guess there's actually four because of Quintus is a prepositional phrase as well. Okay, so you should have had in cubiculum for sure in, a, in your parentheses and then quinti. Um, cum medico, so with the doctor. So there's another prepositional phrase. Who, so we're talking about the doctor, who goes ad lectum to the bed. Oh, there's another prepositional phrase. Okay. Atque puerum aspicit. And aspicit the puerum. Remember, aspicit is a what number verb? A third I, right? Okay. So when he sees the boy, medicus puerum dormire videt. So the doctor sees that the boy is sleeping. Oh, what did we have there? We had that head verb sentence pattern, didn't we? So I hope you marked, remember to pause it after I read each time, okay? So I hope you marked a head verb, which was, if you haven't already done it, go on and do it now, mark. You can just even put a little smiley face above your head verb, okay? We debt, 
And then you have your accusative subject, puerum, and dormire. Okay, so dormire is your infinitive. Okay, so hopefully you put that into your um, head verb. You recognize that as a head verb sentence pattern. Medicus dicit, puer dormit. The medicus or the doctor says, the boy is sleeping. Wow, he's intelligent, isn't he? Syra, quae male audit, id quod medicus dicit audire non potest. So Syra, who hears male, remember what that was? That's an adverb, this modifying the word audit, who hears poorly or hears badly. Now we have to go to the main verb at the end. Non potest is not able, audire, to hear. Okay, now we're going to go back even further. Id quod that which medicus dicit, the doctor says. That's kind of a complicated sentence there, isn't it? Okay, so let's, let me just translate it again. Syra, who hears badly, now go to the end, is not able, audire, to hear that which the medicus says. The doctor, sorry, the doctor says. Okay, so Syra, Syra, ir, let me try that again. Syra, interrogat. Quid dicit medicus? So Syra asks, what does the doctor say? Maybe she doesn't talk like that, but who knows? I have to give her a really weird voice, okay? All right. Emilia in aurum Syrai. So Emilia into the ear of Syrai, Syra, says, Medicus puerum dormire dicit. Okay, so this is another what? What do you see there? It's another head verb sentence pattern. So it's called an indirect command, okay? So the medicus or the doctor says that the boy is sleeping. That's what she's telling, right? She's whispering into Syrah's ear. The doctor says the boy is sleeping. Quintus oculus o aperit atque medicum ad esse videt. Okay, so Quintus opens his oculus, his eyes, and sees that the doctor is present or is like here, okay? Quintus medicum dimet. Quintus fears the doctor. I would too, after you keep reading about this doctor, I would be afraid of this doctor too. Medicus, us aperi puer linguam ostende. Okay, so do you notice quotation marks, right? So we know the doctor is speaking, and we see aperi, and then the other verb ostende, okay? So here we have the imperative, right, in the singular. He's talking to Quintus, and he says, open the mouth, or we probably would add the word your mouth, boy. Show your tongue. Syrah, quid dicit medicus? What does the doctor say? Or what is the doctor saying? Amelia, medicus quintum os aperire atque linguam ostendere jubet. So Amelia is saying here, now I want you to mark it up. I want you to find, where's your head verb? Okay, put a smiley face or mark head verb. And then I want you to mark your two infinitives. Okay, hopefully you found those. Now I want you to mark your accusative subject. All right, now see if you can pause it and translate it to your parent. Okay, let's try this. So our main sentence, our main sentence is medicus at the beginning, right? And you bet at the end. That's the skeleton for our sentence. Now in between, in the brackets, we have quintum as your accusative subject, aperire 
Atque ostendere. Those are your infinitives. So there's your head verb sentence pattern. Okay, let's translate it. So the doctor you bet orders who? Who does he order? He orders Quintum, Quintus, to open. Now we probably supply the word his, but open the mouth and show the tongue. Ostendere linguam. Quintus os aperit atque medico linguam suam ostendit. So Quintus, very obediently, opens his mouth or the mouth and now go to the verb ostend it the direct object to the indirect object so i want you to mark over top which one is your indirect right i o which one is your direct object right d o okay so what is he showing to the person remember the person receiving or being shown the thing the thing is the direct object okay so you should have indirect object I-O over medico and linguam suam over direct object. Now what's so cool about Latin is that your endings, if you couldn't figure that all out, your endings tell you, hey, one is a dative and one is an accusative. And we know because we are so smart and I'm not just saying that sarcastically, you guys are so so smart. So are your superstar moms, just so you know. Um, the, Latin is not an easy language, and you guys are doing so well. Anyways, sorry, teacher tangent. But we know by looking at those endings that our direct objects come in what case? Now, if you looked back at your little sheet that I gave you on the special use of those, where did I put it? Here it is. Special use, you'll see direct object under accusative, right? So we know that because it's in the accusative, it cannot be the indirect object because we see in dative, down here, datives are the ones that are indirect objects, okay? So if you, if you can't figure out what's being shown to someone or whatever, it's hard to figure those things out. It's not that, you know... Um, if you can't work that out, you can also give another hint with the endings, where in English we don't have that kind of hint. So it's a really awesome language. Anyways, okay. So you should have direct object over linguam. All right, so if we translate this whole sentence, it says Quintus opens his mouth and ostend it. He shows his own tongue, eh, medico to the doctor, okay, to the doctor. Medicus linguam eius rubram esse videt. Videt, sorry. The doctor sees his tongue is red. Oh boy, wow, he is so smart, isn't he? Okay, so going ahead in that sentence, there's another head verb sentence pattern, okay? Mark your head verb, mark your infinitive, mark your accusative subject, and let's check it. Your head verb was widet. Esse is your infinitive. Linguam is your accusative subject. Okay, so listen to what the medicus says. He's so smart. Lingua ei eus rubra est. It's a good thing I don't normally read stories because I can't remember what the... Uh, like how I spoke with him from the beginning. So I'm just, if I change all the time, it's because he's, he's stultus, that's why, okay? <laughs> Lingua, maybe I should do that. I'll just do it real country, I don't know. Lingua aeus rubra est, I don't know. He probably didn't sound like that at all, but. Okay, so he says, his tongue is red. And then of course, here's Syrah. Quid deacon? What does he say? Now, Amelia again. Medicus linguam eius rubram esse dicit. Head verb sentence pattern. Mark it all. Okay. We should have dicit as your head verb. Esse as your infinitive. Linguam as your accusative subject. Translated. The doctor said... Oh, sorry, it's Amelia. The doctor says his tongue is red. 
Okay, now you're going to keep reading. We're, we're done for the day. Isn't that awesome? That's a pretty quick reading. But you're going to keep reading and you're going to see this is a hilarious thing. So as you're reading, you and your mom should probably take turns. Maybe your mom can be the silly Syrah and you can be the basically the stupid doctor and uh, enjoy talking in various accents, which makes, of course, makes Latin a lot more fun. Okay, there's not really anything in the next section that's difficult. Um, it's a lot of the same stuff. So as you're going, find those head verb sentence, pattern, sentence patterns, identify the parts, okay? If you have any problems with any of the sentences, please just shoot me a text. I'm happy to just send you a translation, no problem at all. Um, I would highly suggest, because it's so long, um, taking a look at, I kind of sent you an edit to the syllabus that was in the email. What I'm suggesting is that you divide this section into two parts, okay? And then you combine two exercises into one day rather than doing them over two days because you'll see that those exercises, I think it's, I think it's six and seven. Yeah, I have it marked down. Yeah, six and seven, they're pretty easy. So um, those are good ones to just combine up, then that way you don't have such a long translation um, process for the day. So just check that out on in your email. Okay, so the last thing we have to do for today is to take a look at exercise. You know what? I'm sorry, I forgot to look at your vocabulary. Oh, good. Most of it, um, I am sorry. Most of it you've already done. Just go back over that with your mom if you need help. Um, I forgot all about the, the vocabulary. Oh well, it's really hard to teach to yourself. So um, yeah, get that from your mom. Make sure you've got the right definitions written in there. I don't see anything tricky um, with this section. Um, you can see again that the infinitives are being given for those verbs. Um, and one thing I did mark in mine as just a way of remembering is that you'll often see you bere. So that was the orders, right? Orders, the doctor orders Quintus to open his mouth. We, we read, um, you bere and dicere are often what we're seeing in those head verb sentence patterns are indirect commands. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Go on ahead and flip open your page to, uh, or your workbook, I'm sorry, to um, exercise number four. And um, let's take a look at the first four. What you're doing is just what we saw when we were reading, okay? You are taking a direct quotation and you're moving it into an indirect. And really, in this case, they're orders that we're working on. Okay, um, so let's just take a look at this. So you started off on number one. It says, Serwe ad opidum e. Okay, so this is all in quotations. So someone's saying, Servant, I think it was Julius, he was saying that to tell him to go to town and fetch the doctor, right? So, servant or slave go. Remember, that's that weird irregular. It should be on your verb chart at the bottom, but this is the imperative form of that, a singular. Go to the town, okay? So what we're trying to think, the way I usually do these is I put them into an indirect um, quotate or an indirect statement, or this is a command, indirect command in English first. And then I write out my my Latin. So if I were to think this through, what I'm saying is Julius orders the servant to go to town. Okay, so here I have, I have Julius orders. I'll do those first. Okay, what are these? Here's my little head verb guy that helps us out. There's our head verb. Here's our main subject. This is our main verb. Okay. And now we have the inside. Orders the servant 
So remember, we need accusative and, let's see, and an infinitive. And we're going to have our prepositional phrase inside here. Okay. The serum ad opidum. And then the infinitive form of to go is ire. Okay. Ire. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. So go on it, you can go on ahead and write that one out, okay? Just as if we're doing it together. The second one we're gonna do together, and you don't have to pause it um, on this, you can just write it as we're going, okay? All right, so that was number one. All right, now let's do number two. So Julius is saying here, Serwe. Medicum are, whoops, I think I spelled it wrong. Hang on, sorry. Arkesa, okay. So again, he's saying, just like we kind of talked about it there, Julius is saying, slave, fetch the doctor. Okay, so he's ordering him again. So we're gonna use the same thing, okay, the same form. So you have Julius, and then orders, and then you have, okay, and here's your head verb for that one. I'll replace him. Okay, there's your head verb. Orders the slave, there's our accusative subject, okay, to fetch, and this one is arkesere. If you couldn't remember it was a third, you could look at that imperative form there, right? Our imperatives, first conjugation, second, third, third I, and fourth. Okay, so we know it's a third, so it's going to have that ere ending there. And then this stays the same because this is the direct object. Okay, fetch the direct object. All right? Okay, so now on this next one, as I'm writing it out, I want you to try to, um, I want you to try to write it out on your own and then check it to mine, okay? So I'm not gonna talk while I'm writing because I want you to, you to write your answer out at the same time. And if you need to, pause it before you see what I do. Okay, so if I translate this, what I'm translating is, Julius says, Doctor, heal the son, or my son, <laughs> okay, my son. Sana, remember we had these, I shouldn't have erased these, A, E, E, and E, so first, second, third, third I, and fourth, so you can have your verb chart out if you need it. Okay, so this we know is a number one, sanare would be, would be its um, infinitive. Okay, so if I'm going to put this into an indirect statement, I would say, Julius, again, orders, okay, that's our head verb, the medicum, accusative subject, okay, uh, to heal, remember we need an infinitive, sanare the filium. Okay, in this case, this is a direct object. All right, hopefully you got that one. One more, and then we'll, we'll be done with this. Okay, and I'm just going to keep this up here because it's the same basic form. So, Yuli, oh, sorry, this is the medicus talking on this one. Okay, so the medicus says, right, puer os aperi. All right, so 
You should be able to translate this. I want you to go ahead and try to, to fill in this, okay? So if we notice, aperi ends in e, okay? It's a fourth. So we know its infinitive form is going to be aperire, okay? Right, there we go. My computer there it went black. I'm glad it hasn't stopped yet. <laughs> okay. He orders the accusative, puerum, okay, there's our accusative, um, to open his mouth. All right, so those are not too hard, hopefully, for you, because you've been seeing them so many times, right? Okay, so now look in um, exercise five. Um, let me check something real fast. Yes, okay. Exercise five, I wanna make sure I was telling you the right exercise number. Okay, I'm gonna leave those up there. Okay, so now these are not an, a direct command to an indirect command, but they're still using the same basic thing. These are, indirect, uh, these are direct statements to indirect statements. So we're actually only gonna do, um, let's just do number one and number three, okay? And I want you to try to do them on your own. All right, while I'm writing this up here. Okay, medicus Okay. All right. So, our direct quotation is the doctor essentially is saying, right? The tongue of Marcus is red, right? We know how smart he is. <laughs> so when Amelia was turning around and telling Syra, right? She was telling her in an indirect quotation, she was telling Syra what the doctor said, but she wasn't the one who said it, right? So when we turn around and we tell someone else what someone said, we're saying the doctor said, right, that the tongue of Marcus is red. Remember, that's what she's saying to the ear of Syrah, right? Okay, so we have here, there's your main subject, medicus, and then we have decit. Down here, there's our head verb. Same principles, okay? The medicus says that what? The linguam of Marcus is red. Now this is an adjective, right? So here, we're pointing back to lingua. Here, we're still pointing back to lingua, but it's gotta be linguam. And then we still, so there's our accusative. We still need an infinitive. And this, is its infinitive, if you remember, is esse. Okay? All right, so hopefully that makes sense. That this here also has to change because remember the, how adjectives are like chameleons? And they'll morph and change according to their the endings of the word that they're modifying, right? Okay, let's try. Let's see, the medicus is going to talk again. Actually, let's go down to um, number four. This one, no, let's do, we'll just stick with number three. Okay, let's go to number three. Okay. So here's the medicus. He's saying, all right, this is not hard. Quintus is breathing. Oh, good observation. Okay. All right. So again, we have this new word, decit. The doctor says, now you need an accusative plus an infinitive, right? That quintum 
um, breathes. It's a A T, so it's a number one. Spirare. All right. Okay, well, I hope that this makes sense to you. Um, you don't have to do those exercises, um, I don't think, until, I don't know, maybe that's supposed to be, it's on your syllabus, I can't remember. Okay, well, I hope that that all made sense. Let's make sure, that, I guess the last things to say are just for this next week. If you at all had a problem with your quiz, okay, and you did not remember those third um, declension neuter nouns that I was asking you to do, okay, or you couldn't just draw the picture of the body of the person, you know, or the guy or whatever, in the river and label it, you know, just bam, you just know it. You know what parts are in there, you know how to label it, you should be able to, to whip that out in like two minutes, okay? If you can't do that yet, you need to keep doing that at home, okay? That needs to be like a daily drill before you even start reading. Your mom can just say, hey, your drill for today is doing those third declension neuter body picture in the river, okay? And then don't forget to keep working on that vocabulary. This chapter is a little heavier on vocabulary. Next chapter is going to be heavier on grammar. You'll notice there's kind of an ebb and flow to the chapters. That tends to be kind of how it is. There's about, there's like, oh, it's a heavy grammar chapter. And then, oh, okay, now we're in a heavy vocabulary chapter. And then it's kind of grammar again. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's it. I miss you guys. I'm so glad that you guys will all be joining uh, me in Tutu next year. And, um... Yeah, please, please, please email me. Uh, I'm lonely. No, I just, if you guys do have questions, please do ask because I do not want you to feel like uh, you can't get this. So, because I know you can. All right, signing off. I'll see you later.